So, uh, yeah, malfunctioning indicator. So, let's have a look. So it's now working, but I've worked out if I just push the wiring. Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Just push that wiring with my left hand there. And that's the problem. That's why it's intermittent. Because it won't go off now, but there. Look at that. Push it with my thumb. And then it's back on again. Push that wiring in a certain way. And there it goes. There's obviously a broken wire or something. Because I've just taken the switch apart and I couldn't see a bloody thing. Couldn't see anything wrong with it at all. Work fine when you get the switch. Loosen the switch, take it off the bars, it works fine. Put it back on, tighten it up, and it stops working again. Look at that. So there's that pressure on the wire. And that's it. Well, that's why when you clamp it up, look at that, it goes off. <laughs> so it's obviously a broken wire or something there. So at least I've got an idea what it is. Yeah, so I've got it apart. And here are the three connectors for the, uh, for the indicators. Right indicator, uh, live, and left indicator. So the left indicator, I've discovered that the actual button is uh, the contact look is gone look right on the edge. Contact, but only is so dirty. There's only actually contact on that little bit there, and not on the rest of the button. And my guess is that that's why the indicator is working. It it works with a switch halfway across. Probably just when it hits that bit but when you push the switch fully across nothing and then when you and, and moving the wire i'm guessing is just jogging it enough is i don't think it is a broken wire so i thought it was initially i think it's just that this contact is so dirty that it's not making uh, it's not making contact so i reckon cleaning that just cleaning that up should be okay yeah so clean the contacts uh, up now well i've cleaned all three up obviously and uh Look at that, good, uh, good connection all over now on that. So I'm pretty sure that's the problem. I'll put it back together and I think we'll be okay. I think what it is, it's just the, uh, you know, over the years, a little spark or whatever, every time you turn it on, just generally getting dirtier and dirtier and cruddier. And it's just, uh, and eventually the switch is simply not making contact. So I'll clean up the contact, the spring loaded contact is on the other side, obviously, as well. And hopefully uh, we'll have good working indicators again. Okay, I'm going to put the switch back together now. So basically, that's the operating little operating block. I've cleaned everything up with white spirit. Then the spring goes in there. And then I've cleaned up. This is the contact. And it goes in one way, fortunately. You want the two little ridge, ridges to the sides, not to the top and bottom. But it, luckily, it'll only go in one way. So you can't get it wrong. There, and that's the spring-loaded contact that will then operate on these uh, connectors and what will happen will happen is that that goes in there and then this slides on top now I'm going to try doing it now but it's fiddly because of course as soon as you put that in the spring goes and out comes the connection so I shall have a go doing it now but to be honest I should probably do it off camera uh, you know there's this little groove here yeah, and the edge of the, the Bakelite edge there goes in that groove and that's what holds it tight. And I think you'll find that there's a uh, groove in the other side. Uh, no, it's, of course, it's held in place when you put uh, the switch cover on top. That holds the Bakelite, that holds it down and won't come out. OK, but I'll try putting that in now, but um, I don't think it'll work. So what I'm going to I think the first way I'm going to try is one of those, isn't it? I'm actually going to try holding the whole thing together and putting the whole bloody thing in at the same time that's probably going to end in tears oh no of course no 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 I forgot not only is that but of course you've got to get the damn you've got to get the horn uh, horn stroke flashing in first so really I think that's got to go in first it goes in the uh, yeah, slots in there's a there's actually slots either side for the uh, Bakelite as well as at the bottom it's actually the side slots that hold it in better there we go so there's the Bakelite uh, there's the switch and you might just be able to see the three uh, contacts so if you can oh well you know they're there and so all we've got to do then is somehow 
managed to slot this little beggar in spring loaded uh, little contact and uh, we're in business but I, I don't think I'm going to make it and then what happens is when, when that's in this little round spigot that's what the actual switch that you move uh, locates on and that physically slides the contact across left indicator right indicator okay or vice versa I'll try sliding that in let's see if we can do it come straight out it's come straight out a complete mess I was going to say something else then but I didn't let's try it once more I think I might have to go off camera which is probably a good idea anyway oh oh there we go look at that we're in woohoo yeah so you might just be able to see I don't know how clear this is but it's in there and then when you actually move the when you actually move the switch then this uh, this foot here engages with that spigot and physically moves it across the contacts like that okay so I'm not going to move it too much now because it will <laughs> come straight out again so what I've got to do now is screw that plate on there and that will hold everything in position uh, and so we'll be in business so that's held together with three screws uh, I'm going to uh, what I'm going to do is I'm not sure I'm really not sure about this I'm just going to I've got rid of all the old grease because it was absolutely solid doing nothing um, and I'm just going to use WD-40 and then every year I just I just uh, give a squirt of WD-40 in into the switch area rather than grease it i'm not sure of uh, the efficacy of that but um that's what i'm going to do okay i'm just going to screw that top on and then uh, uh when i've done that i'm then going to try and re-thread this is the upper half of the switch which is the uh, dip switch and that threads through the the actual the, that hole there that goes or should go through there I've taken the uh, I've taken the switch the uh, plug off this end so I could actually get those out of the way. All I've got to do is feed them back in. Okay, and we'll probably come back at that point. Now I've put the uh, actual switch back on the plate with these three screws. There's one there. All I have to do is make sure that the actual uh, that the uh, switch was actually locating with that uh, Bakelite uh, spigot. And so now I'm just checking that indeed the whole thing moves across, moves across nice and easily. Okay, I'm sure enough it does. Always check things at every stage, because otherwise you put the whole thing back together, and then suddenly it's not working, you've got to take the whole thing apart. Always check it at every stage that everything's working. So that's okay. Um, and then I'm now going to thre thread this uh, other half of the switch back through the bottom of this switch. Just one thing um, I forgot to mention while I'm doing it. This is actually a sleeve, right? They're not, it's not actually connected to this. It is actually a plastic sleeve. Now, I don't know about you, but one of my pet hates is you see plain wires coming out. I'm going to have to do this to show you. Oh, I'm going to hate doing this. But there, that is a sleeve and it reveals the wires. And I don't know about you, but I hate seeing these things clamped to, in fact, I could do with a clean anyway. Um, because I haven't taken it off before. Uh, I hate seeing them, you know, the wires coming out from there. I just, <laughs> this always looks, I don't know, it just annoys me on a bike. So, whilst I'm doing it now, when I've got it, good access to it, I'm pushing this sleeve back into the switch to make sure those wires are all covered. And, and also, of course, it helps to stop any shorts. Because when you, and we know when we do those damn clamps up, the, the actual clamp up to hold the switch in place they can uh, they can cut the wire if you're not careful I just want to get it under there we go I want to get it under that plate that's it okay so there we've got the wires fully covered so that when we put that back on the bike we're not going to see any multicolored wires sticking out it's just a that's a little thing okay also uh, we were talking about shorts and that the other day this is a typical switch handlebar uh, switch wire and if you and I can guarantee that virtual bikes of an age are like this look there's nicks and cuts down here various parts of the wire where previous owners over the years they've clamped it wrongly 
they've crushed it that's crushed there it's been caught in a headlamp been caught in the clips that hold it onto the handlebars etc so shorts if you get a short circuit this is always one place to start i mean i've checked these like that's a bad cut but it is only in the outer sheathing the actual wires inside are untouched okay so the uh, top half of the switch is now back on i've fed the wire back down through the hole and then i've put the small multi-pin connector back on the end of those wires using the other uh, side of the switch the female the female side of the plug rather to obviously to check which wire goes in goes in which one and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take oops, if I pick it up uh, I'm going to take the whole caboodle switch and roughly fit it to the bike uh, and check it's working what you don't want to do is put the whole thing neatly back on the bike and so that and then switch it on and it's not working because then you got to take it all off again so I'm just going to loosely connect it up check the electrics before I fit it fully back on the bike okay so I've uh, loosely uh, connected the uh, switch unit back uh, to the headlamp uh, connectors just so I can check it before getting it back on the bike. So, uh, switch on. And let's try the dear old gl glorious indicators we, we didn't have left before. So let's indicate left. Wahey! Indicating left. And we have indicator. Let's check indicator right. We have right indicator. Oh, hey, hey. Okay, let's check. Uh, better just check the other switches while we're there. So I'll put the headlight on and just check we have uh, dip. Yeah. yeah, we have. And, um, oh, yeah, better check uh, horn. <coughs> Bit naff, but we've got a horn. And uh, headlamp flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we know that switch is all now fully working. And we can put it back in. Hoorah. Turn the ignition off. There we go. I did uh, take the fuse out, by the way, uh, before doing all this. And I'll take it out again. Because if you're doing wiring, even if you're not going anywhere, you think, I'm not going to do any of the live, blah, blah, blah. You, you don't want to risk it. So I'll, I'll, I'll take the fuse back. That's why the seat's up. I'll take the fuse, main fuse back out before uh, putting all this wiring back in. Okay. Right, I've uh, I've reconnected the uh, multi-pin connectors on the uh, inside the headlamp because on the T160 it's multi-pin connectors. I just mentioned that in fact this big connector was a bit of a beggar. When I pushed it in, it didn't want to go on. I pushed it hard, and what happened was instead of the connector going in, what happened was the wires came out the back. You know, they came uh, the actual connectors, the little metal ones. They let go and instead of, and so you think oh you've pushed it in but then you actually look at the connectors at the back either side and you actually see that a couple of them have actually come out because they weren't locating properly and so you think you've pushed the connector together and it's not actually making contact so when these multiple connectors just always check the backs of them uh, the wires at either end to make sure that the you know the connector is has you know there is proper connection it hasn't just pushed the damn wire out the back from the other side okay okay uh switch is all back on now and uh i put uh, cable ties around i think probably the neatest i like it anyway headlamps all back together so let's give it a go ignition on now i figure i've got a fancy warning light which is a combined all warning light and ignition light so it mine flashes Ignore it. Okay, so we're left indicator. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And the fit switch actually feels really good. Feels much more solid. Right indicator. Yeah, it feels good and positive, that switch. Uh, horn, just while we're here. Yeah, good. Headlamp flash. Yeah. Good. Okay. And uh, lights. This will send my switch crazy, yeah, because it's the, isn't, isn't, and that's it, headlight, yeah. Okay, so all working, and indicator 100% back. Uh, that's good. So there we go, yeah, so a little thing. So I thought to begin with, it was a, uh, a bad connection, but I put WD-40 in, it make any difference. So then I thought it was a broken wire, because by moving that, 
that uh, made it work. But what I was actually doing was just obviously just jiggling the connection just that bit. Uh, so it made connection. So when I got it apart, I found out that connector was absolutely really dirty. It was only making connection in one place, which is why it was actually only working halfway across the switch. Put it fully across, where obviously it went in, uh, the the connector went to the part that wasn't, uh, that was dirty, wasn't making contact. Just putting the switch halfway across, obviously it was where there was that little bit of switch that was still uh, clean and that was working. Anyway, so uh, all done. Uh, oiled up with WD-40 uh, and I think we're okay. So there we go. Back uh, indicators back working again.